Well, cool, you guys. Thanks for showing up. <clears throat> Uh, my name is Sean Anderson. I'm, I'm a professor in the super long name department here called Environmental Science and Resource Management. I'm going to talk to you. Of course, my voice has gone out. I just got back from New Orleans, so my voice is a little, little uh, not great. <clears throat> anyway, um, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about our program here today, give you a bit of an overview, tell you about what we do here. And um, by all means, please interrupt me if I, if I am too not understandable or go too fast or whatever. By all means, this is for you guys to get information, so please do interrupt. Also, I'm happy to, I know you guys have a, a schedule, 9.15, I think you guys got to head to your next place or a few minutes before so you can make it to your next spot, which is great. Um, but I'm also happy to show people our, our new labs, if you guys want to see our labs. Um, just a quick uh, two-minute walk out the door here up in one of the adjacent buildings. Happy to show you guys that if you're curious. And also happy to answer questions afterwards if you guys have to skedaddle and want to reach out. Um, so I'm going to kill the lights a little bit just because it's so bright in here. Um, everybody's going to go to sleep now that it's early in the morning on a Saturday, I understand. <laughs> so environmental science and resource management is a weird thing. Uh, when we created this program, there was, there was nothing else named this in the U.S. And since then, now we have some of our community colleges picking up. University of Washington is named there. New program, this. And the basic idea is, this is my colleague Don Rodriguez, who's our current chair and is unfortunately retiring uh, in the summer, which means I'm going to have to be the chair, which is horrible for everybody, probably. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, when we were creating this program, this, the vision really was to take disparate groups and bring them together. So this might not sound like different groups, but environmental science was, was, has been one tradition, people measuring pollution, doing stuff like that, mostly in the lab or using a lot of technology. Resource management has mostly been uh, dudes, mostly, uh, on horseback, riding around, figuring out how we manage cattle, goats, um, uh, mountain lions, things like that. And our idea was to bring these two traditions together. We work all over the place. These are, these are some of our current projects. Um, Cook Islands, Hawaii, um, Louisiana, Middle East, etc. These are only my sites. We had on um, my colleague sites, it would be hard to see, it would be hard to put words up here because there would be so many dots around the world. So we're a small new university, we're a small new program, but we really do work in a whole variety of contexts in a variety of places, a lot in, here in Southern California, but also um, around. That's, I'd say it's fairly unusual for a small department uh, like us at a, at a brand new school. Our major has two emphases. Uh, one is called, it's very, it's very st hold with me, I don't know if you guys can get the complexity here, environmental science emphasis and resource management emphasis. So not a huge amount of difference. There's really a, a couple, if you're more interested in chemistry, a couple classes, it's really um, a, a 10, 15 unit difference between these, these two emphases. So primarily they're the same thing. Um, you get a Bachelor of Science uh, degree uh, with us. And over the years, people have encouraged us, you should change it to a Bachelor of Arts, so it would be easier. And no, um, we're, interested, we're interested in you guys getting jobs afterwards. So that, that's our primary focus. And we do a much better job if you have a BS than if you have a BA. We also have a minor. So if you guys aren't interested in, in doing the full-blown uh, ESRM major, I would strongly encourage you to consider doing a minor. Um, we're so interdisciplinary. Um, a huge number of our classes, I, I, we just redid the major again, and we went from 72% to 69% of the courses in our major are taken outside of us. So you take a year of bio, you take chemistry, you take economics, uh, political science, et cetera. We think having a real strong interdisciplinary focus is absolutely key to solving a lot of our current challenges. And we're interested in solving challenges and providing options to people. Um, not sort of hanging out in silos and talking to people that look like us and, and think like us always. Um, we're also, uh, more about that in, in, a, in a second or two, but also we uh, are the, we're the first group on campus to have a community advisory board. So we have a group of people in the community, uh, consulting firms, government, uh, federal agencies, et cetera, that we meet with um, and they give us feedback. Hey, you know what? Your students really should be having a class on this or what have you. So we get feedback all the time from our practitioner community. We're in the process of launching our first master's program, which is called the Professional Science Masters, and we have a community advisory board for that. So we're constantly trying to figure out how we can tune and tweak things 
to best serve you guys. Couple, uh, and again, you guys can interrupt me if I'm going too fast or, or something isn't, doesn't make sense. Um, we, there's a lot of unique things about our program compared to other programs. Um, I should have said real quickly, my background is I did my undergrad at UC Santa Barbara. And then I, I, uh, uh, I had four part-time jobs at one point to pay for school, so I totally understand the financial stress thing. Uh, I graduated, ran a lab there for a little while, and then went to Antarctica for a little while. And then I uh, did my PhD at UCLA, and then went up to Stanford. And we were at Stanford, my wife and I, for several years. And we left to come, found, to come help found um, this place because we really believe in the mission and the, um, the uniqueness about this campus. And so, so when, we, when I came in, it was, I was super lucky, and my colleagues were super lucky that we got to craft a program the way we thought it should go. Um, so for example, I already mentioned that we combined the tradition, these traditional quote unquote separate fields, environmental science and resource management. Um, we are super focused on this options once you graduate. Um, there's a debate in higher ed, and some people think that university education is to expand your mind and make you a better person. And I, I, as an academic, as a nerdy dude, I believe in knowledge for knowledge's sake. I think that's important. I think, I think having debates on your freshman college floor are important. That's an important thing that makes you grow. But we also strongly believe that part of our mission is to make sure you guys can have a career that you're interested in and prepare you specifically for that, that type of stuff. Um, and, and so there's, there's always a, a, a tension in academia how to do that. Um, we are primarily field-based, so we're mostly outside. So we screw with the university all the time. They're always upset with us. The risk manager people don't know what to do with us usually because we're, do, we're flying robots and we're on ships and we're going to Louisiana and they're like, whoa, it doesn't fit the mold. We do it anyway. So we're, we're field science-based, but we use a lot of technology. So GIS, making maps, is a key aspect of um, what we do and what we train you guys to do. Just like you have to know how to use Word and Excel and those basic programs, you also need basic functionality in making maps. Every single one of our students, whether they go to a, whether they become a teacher, whether they go to a water agency, whoever, they have to be able to make maps. Um, similarly, uh, uh, drones have become a big thing for us in the last couple years because we also believe you don't necessarily have to build them from scratch. Some of our students do, but you need to be able to use this new technology. Every single one of the agencies that hires our students want to use this type of technology. And we've, we try to get out in front of that so that you guys are ready for that, that first wave. Um, interdisciplinarity, as I mentioned, is really, really key to us. And interdisciplinarity is kind of a, a baloney word a lot of times. So, so the biochemist works with the physical chemist and they say, we're interdisciplinary. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about working with the economist and uh, the oil company and the environmental group and the physicist and the, you know, all that stuff together, that's what we mean by interdisciplinary, really interdisciplinary. So we um, not only, folk, we're, we're, we tend to be grounded in the natural sciences, but we also are very, um, um, make sure that all of our students have a good grounding in the humanities and the social sciences, again, because we're interested in solving these problems. So you can't be an expert in everything, but it's really, really key that you understand the constraints that come with the economic issues, with the political issues, with the, with the tribal issues, um, if we're going to try to solve some of these, these challenges that we have. Um, and, uh, and again, really, really field-oriented and, and applied focus. So at the risk of, of giving a bad metaphor, we're kind of like an onion. I hopefully, hopefully we're not that stinky. But the idea is we've really crafted this program as, as nested within, and this is an ongoing process, I should say. We are not perfect by any means. Every year we tweak, we tweak, we tweak. We just hired a new colleague, <clears throat> and, uh, and he's going to help us continue this process. But basically at the core for us, data and writing, which a lot of my students go, oh, yep, got to do it. Every single one of our graduates that goes somewhere, they all say, make them write more, make them do more graphs, right? It's, it's a key skill set. So we bake that in, not just into some of our outside projects, but most of our classes. So writing is at the core. And then uh, applied skills are really, really key. I mentioned some of those things like measuring pollutants, robots, uh, doing all manner of field work. And then uh, a really, uh, and we have a huge number of partners, uh, park service, um, Let's see, I just got back yesterday from a business incubator meeting in, in San Pedro, and we're meeting with biotech folks and, and uh, underwater roboticists and all kinds of folks. So we have 
We have a ton of partners um, in the NGO community, in government, et cetera, in, in the private sector. Uh, and then really strong community engagement. And, and again, this is not, I'm not throwing this up to say some buzzword or something. This is really, really true. So when we go to uh, places like New Orleans, we embed with NGO partners. So we went to New Orleans right after the Hurricane Katrina and we made, we made friends and everything and we've been working with those people for 12 years. Um, here locally, we work with folks in, in the Oxnard Plain, out of the Channel Islands, et cetera, and our partners are really, really key to us. One, because we're trying to create products and solutions for them, but also it means our students interact with these people all throughout their, their, their time with us. Or maybe not their freshman year so much, but, 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 but they sort of visit during the freshman year. But basically, um, more and more interaction with these various groups, and that turns out to be really key when it comes to getting you guys jobs. And then all that's wrapped in our capstone. So we have a, a somewhat unique capstone. We have a year-long capstone, which is at the end of your, your career and, uh, with us. And uh, that is um, a research project-based thing. So our students do independent research. And um, it's great. So they're guided by me or our, my fellow colleagues or whoever. Um, but again, they're doing the work. They're doing all the data collection. They're doing all the analysis. Right now we're in the middle of analysis and it's painful, right? It's like, oh my God. So, um, so we go through all that stuff and then our students present that and it's evaluated by people that aren't me. Members of the community evaluate their work in, in a poster session and they also write stuff. So again, we really try to bake these things throughout all of our classes to have all these things to a greater or lesser extent in, in the classes with increasing complexity as you go through the years. Where do our students work? Just a couple quick examples. Uh, we have students working for, uh, that are park rangers and local agencies, uh, game wardens, uh, one of the, the game wardens for the Ventura County is one of our alumni, um, uh, alumnus, uh, water quality technicians, uh, Santa Monica Mountains Resource Conservation District, Ventura County Coast Keeper, uh, NGO, uh, uh, Joint Powers Authority, and then an NGO, um, fisheries technicians, uh, we have students working for United Water District, which is just up here. So water agency, uh, California Fish and Wildlife, which is, this is, this is obviously an old sign because uh, the names have changed. But uh, uh, fish, uh, then traditional biologists, like uh, working for the Forest Service, et cetera. Um, one of the most rapid growing areas, which is crazy, is a lot of my students are now going up to Silicon Valley. So my students are getting hired in San Francisco and in San Diego, primarily doing robotic stuff because we train them um, to do all, you build drones and fly drones and stuff, which is crazy because we're not an engineering program. But, but um, those folks report they really like our students because we're data based. We don't really care about the magic technology. We just want to get somewhere. Almost all the engineering programs around focus on building a propeller. How do you make the propeller the best propeller you can make, which is, which is great. We need people to do that. But we don't care about any of that. We just want to take the propeller and go fly. And there's few programs that actually are focused on you guys using technology to answer questions. And so they like the fact that our students have worked out on an island, in the water, up in the mountains, that kind of stuff. Um, and then uh, land use planners, GIS technicians, et cetera, people working for local agencies, et cetera. Um, so these are just, this is a small example. I just ran through some of these. But, but we have students working for all these different places. Um, yeah, so a lot of different, a lot of different places. Uh, I should say that I, um, the programs that I come from um, have uh, uh, in ecology, so my back, I should have also said, I didn't say, so my background is in biology and ecology. So I'm a conservation biologist. Uh, my programs at UCLA uh, from, uh, from UCSB, uh, not particularly successful at doing what we, tr we train you guys to do. And that's, that's not, the program's fault, it's just it's hard. So typically I would say it's about 50 to 60% of the graduates from those programs are doing something vaguely related to their ecological training, whatever. For us, it's closer to about 90 to 95%. We were about 100%, but then the recession came in, it made things tough. There's always random throws of the dice when you guys come up looking for a job, and there's always problems that come up, but, but we think the, the preparations that we give you guys position you at least relatively well to have a good, good chance to take a bite at that apple for whatever your agency is. And also because we're interdisciplinary, our students go to a variety of places, right? So again, I mentioned some are doing education, some are doing fields, uh, most are doing field science type stuff, but some are doing more planning and that, that type, of, type of thing. Uh, just a couple examples more of our, our students. Uh, Lisa works uh, for Fish and Wildlife down in San Diego. Uh, Reed does surveys out in New Mexico. Uh, Travis is uh, 
he was actually, was, is at a Bible college of all places in Orange County temporarily, but now he's starting up a master's in uh, Germany, uh, wildlife stuff. Uh, Cassidy just finished her master's degree. Uh, um, she's a Native American and she was looking at several of um, these, these cool plants that were traditionally important to the local Chumash. She just graduated. Uh, she is, I think she's just moving back with her parents before she goes on to her job in, in the fall, but, but uh, uh, that's Cassidy. Uh, Steven is uh, doing a master's program uh, uh, in Utah. Evan works for one of our local water districts. Adam is back in New York um, working on pollution. Uh, Dorothy just graduated. She's currently a Fish and Wildlife Service Condor Technician, but uh, she's going to move up to Portland, up to the Pacific Northwest to start a PhD program in the, uh, uh, in the fall. And as, as Dorothy as well, just as an example, this is all our undergraduate research. So in this case, this is last year, this is the cover of the star. So this is the quality of work that our students do. So they, they, they you don't have to do this, but, but oftentimes their work is good enough to be published in academic journals, to be featured in national news stories. Typically when I take students to conferences, they are always confused for master students. My colleagues at most of our other institutions um, are surprised to learn the quality of the work that, that you guys do as undergrads. They, they, uh, so yeah, it causes problems sometimes because people start questioning really harshly. I'm like, whoa, 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 just a sophomore, man. I'm like, what? <laughs> um, also, again, we really try to be at this, at this so-called bleeding edge of a lot of these technologies and, and innovations and policy things so that you guys are well prepared. Again, the issue with my, my parental programs, the programs I came from, they do straight science, basically. And then the students would graduate, and they usually weren't straight science jobs. They were these jobs, like I, I was mentioning. And the students don't, don't know how to do an EIR, don't know about these things. So they spend six months, nine months learning how to do stuff for that company or that, that agency or whatever. Our students spend more like a week or two or a couple weeks, and then they're ready to go So be, because of that preparation. And so a lot of that focus comes from our bleeding edge. So this is just this week. So this week. Uh, uh, we're being interviewed about um, the current administration in Washington and about their views of science. Um, we got a phone call from New York. So they were, they had, this reporter thought they saw an oil spill. So they um, were using drones. So they called us up because, like, really? Somebody from New York's calling us up? But they apparently were, we've become known as experts in doing some of this kind of diagnostic stuff. So we're doing there. And then that's the, if you check out our, our web page, that's the cover shot. That's we just got back from New Orleans. So our students are there. And this is just a typical week, I would say, for us. Um, but you should not believe me. You should go look for yourselves and see, and see uh, this isn't all smoke and mirrors. So the default place you guys would probably go to look at is esrm.csuci.edu. And I'm supposed to say, you should go there, because that's the university web page, and that's what we're supposed to use. The university understandably wants all of our department web pages to look the same. So it's hard for us to control. It sort of looks ugly and it's sort of a problem. So we said, you know, screw that. So we created our own web page. So, it's, so our students vote on the name. So it's esrm.zone. So technically this isn't formally launched yet. It's in beta version, but you guys can go check it out. So there's profiles of stuff. There's profiles of alumni. There's examples. And I think that'll start to give you a sense for what our program is like. And much of the content on there is generated by our students. So we, we, we tweak it and stuff. But again, I, I haven't checked it, so it's a beta launch. There might be spelling errors and stuff, but, but check out esrm.zone. Our idea is starting next year, that's going to be the main point where our students will log on to, to find jobs, to, to just get background information, that kind of stuff. Um, but, and then these next three websites are my websites. So um, we call my lab the Pirate Lab. Uh, be, well, we like pirates, but... but um, <laughs> But it, it stood originally for Pacific Institute for Restoration Ecology. And then I got in trouble because we have a new policy on institutes and centers. And they said, you can't call it, can't say Pacific Institute because it's not an approved center. It's like, what? So we just changed the name to pirate then as opposed to the full name. And everybody's like, well, you think you're pirates? You think you're like rebels? Like, well, you guys think you're dangerous? No. Um, but, uh, but when it came time to, <clears throat> when it came time to, to create, we have, a, we have a group of folks that work on these robots. Um, and flying robots, swimming robots, and so my students decided to name it Aerial and, our Aerial and Aquatic Robotic Research Group, and that, so that's R, so it's the pirate R. So that was a little bit, a little bit of an immature, immature response to the university saying we can't be called, you know, pirate. Anyway, so, um, 
<laughs> so you can look, check that out, and that, that just features you know basically a blog post essentially of, of some of the stuff we do. <laughs> so that's pirate, and then uh, our work on oil spills is oil.piratelab.org. And then if you want to see, for example, one of our classes, so our students blog uh, when we do these faraway classes. Um, and so we just got back from New Orleans. In fact, we have a poster session this Thursday. You guys are more than welcome to come. It's open to the public on the second floor of Sierra Hall, 4.30 to 6.30. My students will be presenting posters and we'll be making, they learn how to cook. We do the history of Louisiana through food, so they, they, they cook for people. And uh, we have videos. So if you guys are, again, interested in getting a sense of what the classes are like, our last session is this. Thursday. But if you go to nola.piratelab.org, you'll see their posts. Um, and again, most of those are just raw from the field, so I haven't checked them all out. I don't know if the spelling is cool. And then, uh, also if you want some, some unvarnished view, if you just go to YouTube and Google my name, uh, plus there's, there's rappers that use my name because I'm so cool. Um, <laughs> but if you, do, if you do Sean Anderson plus ESRM, you'll find, you'll, that's the easiest way to get to our YouTube page. So most of my lectures I record. Um, a lot of the experiences I record or go to conferences, we just, I just got back from that thing I mentioned in, in, Palos, in um, San Pedro. But so if you want to get a sense of what, for example, my classes are like, you can go look at it and it's, it's, it's right there. So the good, the bad, the ugly is all there and you can, you can see if that's uh, something that's of interest to you. Um, we're going to run out of time. I want to leave time for questions. I'll just jump through these really quickly. But, but what we call conservation mechatronics, this is a dock in the Cook Islands. And this is some of the some of the robots we use. This is a, a fixed wing flying robot. This is a, a multi multi rotor, and this is an underwater uh, remotely operated vehicle that we use to look at the health of coral reef and reefs and stuff. Um, again, we're interdisciplinary. Um, so actually, if you go to that AARR website, there's a link. I'd love for all you guys to take our drone poll. So so it's open to anybody. You don't have to know anything about drones. Whatever. Love for you guys to take it. It's still open. Um, last year, we had people respond from all 50 states in Puerto Rico. We had uh, 1,300 people respond last year, and it's actually becoming a resource that we share with the industry. But for example, uh, this, this is data collected by my students. So this is in our coastal marine management class. Every fall, they go out and they interview folks, um, uh, Santa Barbara, Ventura, LA County. And uh, it's mostly about uh, coastal marine management, but this, is, this one question is about drones, but it just serves to make the point that we're not Again, we're interested in the interdisciplinary use of things and, and how things can solve problems. If you ask people, do they have a positive view of these little flying robots? Um, it, if you add up all the negative stuff, it's about, it's about uh, a third or so think it have, have a negative view. About half as many people are positive. And so when you read these stories, people are like, those kids flying those things, you know, it's bad, it's dangerous, spying on me, etc. cetera. Um, uh, but the real story is the neutral versus the, un, uh, the unsure people, which are un, un, undecided yet. So the, the largest chunk of people haven't decided they're not positive or negative. We were first given um, our first drone about um, six years ago, first, first gift, and we said, great, said thanks, and the president has this, our, our, our former president, um, uh, who's a great guy, uh, both our presidents are great people, but, but so he, he uh, said, oh no, we're not taking that. I said, well, what? Said, yeah, no, no. Drone, people think about drones and they think about Afghanistan and blowing up and spying on people and being unsafe. And, and to his credit, I said, well, no, 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 this should be really, we don't want, that's bad too, we don't want to do that. But we think it could be useful. And so to his credit, he said, okay, well, maybe I'm wrong, but here's the deal. You got to go make me a policy. And I'm like, ah, oh. you know, you got to talk to lawyers and you got to like you know, all these things. Like a year and a half later, all these meetings and my head explodes. And um, long story short, we created a policy here. And I thought, we're this, we're this little podunk small university. Every 12-year-old's flying these things around the country, and <laughs> we can't fly them. So it turns out we actually created the first policy like this in our part of the country. So this policy, which basically all it says is if we're going to fly this for research or teaching, you make sure you have all the safety, you got all your checks done, and, and very similar to how we do medical research or psychological research, you have, we have to just make sure that we're not you know, messing with people, that kind of stuff, everything's above board. Um, and so that policy is now required of all the other 23 campuses across the CSU. 
Our, our friends in the UC have borrowed elements of it for their stuff in the UC. And so we've gone from being this little teeny podunk thing to now we're invited to all these, I'm currently writing a textbook on drone education and we're invited to all these conferences and people now look at us as this, this expert in terms of education with regards to these tools. And I'm thinking, really? We're the, we're the experts? That's crazy. Um, uh, we're almost out of time, but uh, this is a class. We, we take students to the Cook Islands. Um, and we do essentially, when we do these classes, we act as a free environmental consulting firm with our partners, in this case with some village, villagers on the island of Atutaki and the, and the, the local government. Um, and, and they just don't have the money or the expertise to do stuff. So we kind of pop in and we do the monitoring for them. Um, uh, this is my, my class trip to Hawaii uh, this past fall. Um, and same kind of thing. Uh, our colleagues, uh, my colleague Don Rodriguez, we just got back from Costa Rica in, in uh, February. And so these guys take students down to Costa Rica, same thing, um, same idea. We used to go to Mexico, but it got, we were banned because of travel, State Department travel authorization. So we moved a few years ago to Costa Rica, and that's been actually an even better fit for us. So we work in coastal issues, turtle, crocodiles, and stuff like that down there. Um, my, my class in Louisiana already mentioned that. We leave, we go, we spend about half our time. Originally, we spent half our time doing home rebuilding, and the other half doing wetland restoration. And then most nights, we meet with jazz musicians or lieutenant governor this year, uh, um, uh, Pulitzer Prize winners, uh, business leaders, um, religious leaders. Um, and we just sort of innervate students into the culture and the community. Why is this place recovering the way it has? Why hasn't it gotten better? What's worked? What hasn't worked? So we spent half our time doing homes, the other half doing wetland restoration. After about the third year, people's money ran out. So now we install food gardens in poor neighborhoods, which is much more, you know, the electrical wiring was like, are you sure you want us doing this? But the <laughs> installing, installing food gardens is, is much more our, our pace. So we do that. Um, and, we have par and we have collaborators that come from Oregon State and UCLA that join us, um, but uh, they virtually can never afford to bring students, so we're the group that brings students. As, as crazy as the poorest, smallest school brings the most amount of labor, but that's how it always seems to be. Um, we, we also do a lot of research, so I run a national working group looking at what happened with the Deepwater Horizon, and we, we do, um, I consider, high-quality research as well here. Um, this is our Eastern Turkey project. So this is my colleague, Yosef Kusak from the University of Zagreb, and we've just caught this um, uh, same technique that, we, that is, is used here in the Santa Monica's when we do our mountain lion work. Um, but here we just trapped this uh, female wolf, and we have just darted her, hit her in the rump, and so we're not allowed to have guns there, so the border areas, all kinds of things blow up and stuff. So, um, so that's a medical delivery device. So we just <laughs> shot that little pink thing in her rump is a little sleeping syringe, so she's gonna fall asleep. And then we're going to go take the trap off her leg, which doesn't hurt her. And then we, we take some blood, and we put a radio collar around her, and we see how she moves around. So we can work on minimizing wildlife-human conflicts and, and creating wildlife corridors, et cetera. So we do that kind of stuff. We do a lot of stuff locally. That I show those things just because those are different. But we do a lot of stuff right here in Oxnard um, with schools, et cetera. Um, I'm out of time. Um, I'll just maybe use this as the last slide, and then I'll put up my last, last one. Um, but uh, this is Jerry. This is one of our, our, our graduates. Jerry was very sweet, and he's very quiet. And I'm, I tend to be obnoxious. And so he came to our lab when he was, when he was starting here, and he's like, I'd like to, I think I'd like to help out. I said, okay, great, come on, dude. And so we took him out. And so we do a lot of stuff in the field and then also in the lab. So we took him out, great field guy, you know, doing, doing good stuff, good stuff. And then uh, we started having to do analysis, and they said, okay, I'm going to start bringing you to conferences. And he goes, oh, no, no. So yeah, okay, you're gonna come anyway. So he, he come, right? And so started doing stuff and he slowly got better, better, more articulate, right? And he was always articulate, but, but, but uh, more confident, I should say, more and more confident. And then pretty soon we started sending him to meetings. So in this meeting, this was at the chancellor's office, he's, he's presenting a poster that we're working on and then in walks the governor. <clears throat> and so he gave our, he summarized our research for the governor, which was really cool. He left, when he graduated, he went to work for one of our local joint, part, joint authorities. Now he works for the Army Corps of Engineers and is doing great, great stuff. So I think it's, it's a wonderful example of how um, whatever you guys want to do, we, we try to facilitate whatever your guys' interests are. And we're out of time. I'll just say that's my contact info. Um, you guys are welcome to, um, to, to send me an email, whatever. I get about 500 emails a day. 
So please do send me an email. But if something's important, you really have a question, by all means, please um, send me a text and send me a, a, or a little call. Say, hey, Dr. Anderson, I had a, I had a question. And you did, last Tuesday, I sent you an email. You didn't respond. Just you know, either we can talk right there on the phone, or, um, or I can just direct and go check out your email. So I'm not trying to avoid people. It's just hard to, to get through all my, I need about six or seven hours a day just doing email, and I usually don't have that time. So I talked the whole time. How lame is that? Do you guys have any questions before you leave? Like, that was super lame. I, sorry. Sorry about that. And I should put up, I should put up our, our links, too, if you guys, uh, check out the ESRM zone if you guys, if you guys are curious. But questions, yeah. Uh, 